a blue sky Tennessee day. But there's a storm coming. Look a little closer and it's a city under siege. Piercing the air around the Fort Campbell base, a mob of drones on the hunt. There's nobody around here. The city's been constructed by a US military experimental unit to see how swarms of unmanned systems can storm urban environments. At least 250 drones and school bag sized rovers working with different levels of autonomy. They're looking for high value items but must work around hazards in the area. DARPA first invited tech teams onto this program in 2017. This is the final experiment. The idea is for swarms to gather intelligence for living, breathing troops from areas with tall buildings and poor lines of sight. Now, this could all feel a little bit close to home, but they're all moving to the tune of human commanders who lay out algorithms from afar. So how concerned should you be watching this from a quiet town of your own? It's easy for us to perhaps envisage that being our house that's being looked at, that's being observed from the ground and from above, and perhaps somebody is looking at it with an intention to do us harm in some way. So yes, it, it should be uncomfortable because war is uncomfortable and military forces, they, they do some terrible things in terrible situations, and hopefully for good reasons. Every major step forward in military technology tends to bring a, a degree of both concern. And then on the military side, there can be enthusiasm because there's a new capability that might come and make the job easier. What might look suspicious from one end of a street, from a, an airborne drone, might actually look quite benign when, when checked from three or four other angles. And the beauty of a swarm is you can get those different perspectives at the same time. What appears on screen is probably more impressive looking than, than the reality of what can be applied right now. Previous workouts under the Offensive Swarm Enabled Tactics Programme have seen a focus on urban raids. From the information released, they're not even trying to identify humans, say, with facial recognition. The more controversial area, of course, is if you develop that kind of capability further and then put an armed system in the way. Teaming swarms with humans is a priority. DARPA asking groups to take control on mobiles and tablets, as well as virtual and augmented reality platforms. The UK wants man, not machine, to make the final decision on pulling triggers. But will others share the same ideas when it comes to swarming this technology? There is a new arms race, it's a new drones arms race to, to be on top of the technology. Imagine group like ISIS or, or their successors or, or affiliates. Because the technology is available off the shelf, it can be adapted and used. What is really difficult, and that's uh, the great challenge, is having multiple of these drones all talking to one system. I think the more complex, the more it's, it really needs entire countries and national infrastructure to support the development. Special Hive vehicles were also on show, transporting and deploying up to 80 drones nearby and then charging them when needed. The large Hive vehicle in some ways is, a, is an acknowledgement of the fundamental limitation of these small drones and that is the battery life. If I was trying to counter these drones which are delivered by a, a vehicle that charges all its batteries, I would only be thinking how do I counter the vehicle. DARPA says these swarms are rapidly nearing availability for future operations and you don't have to look much closer to see why. Tom Sables, Forces News. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.